Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. It has been a very long time on this channel, a couple months. Um don't know exactly, I think it's been at least three months. Um but um I know one person requested for me to make a complete video on how I plan a flight, um, how I set it all up and then actually go flying. Um this is what we're going to do today. We're going to do a complete flight, but of course we're going to start off with planning it. And this might take a little while, but I'll try to condense it as much as I can. So the first thing I usually do is decide what plane do I want to fly that I own. Um, I own quite a few airplanes, so but it's never too hard or too difficult because I always go for pretty much the same plane, and that is the Flight Factor 8220, so we're going to fly that today. And um, then I decide... Uh, what scenery do I have that I want to fly to, and if I don't have that scenery, is there at least one scenery I can fly to, or is there any good freeware scenery that I can fly to, because um, I don't want to fly into something that's empty or looks bad and it's just it's depressing to look at. Um, and so I'm like, hmm, what about, which we're going to actually do today, what about uh, Dublin to Hamburg? Does that exist for an A320? So I go on online. I go to FlightAware, I have a little count there, and I just look up the flight. Um, what is. Uh, there we go. So I just look it up. And lo and behold, there is a A320 scheduled, which is from Aer Lingus. So I click on it. I'm going to click on the most recent one. I know how long it about takes. And uh, if I do make a video, I also make sure that I haven't covered this flight or I haven't covered this airport too long, too much. Um, airplane, eh, it's a different story. Uh, if I fly something, I want it to be quite realistic. So there's really not much to offer at the moment. Yes, there's a 767, 757, the Zebo, the A320 now, right here. Um, but a lot of all the other stuff that I would love to fly. Um, it just isn't there yet, you know, um, like the Embraer's 170 and 190 from SSG, I have those as well. The CRJ200, I'm waiting for V2, I'm hoping that comes out soon, but apparently probably, it might take another couple of years because Philip is very busy with the X-Plane 11 right now. Um, uh, what else is there? Uh, I mean, the 777, I would love to fly, but they're all not up to my standards where I'm like, yes, I really want to invest my time in those. So I'm really stuck between, I mean, that's, I guess, my own fault for wanting to have these really good aircraft. Um, I shouldn't be as picky, but I just am. So I always go for the most high-fidelity aircraft. In this case, it's a flight factor, so I want to fly that. And uh, as you can see, Aer Lingus 394 is expected to depart in about two hours. Uh, yeah, okay, there's my account. Um, and, yeah. Okay, I checked this website like literally 10 minutes ago, and it looked totally different when I looked this up, but it doesn't matter. Then I launched PFPX, um, and as you can see, I already have quite a few things here that I use. Actually, you'll see what I use exactly. So then I launched PFPX, and I started planning my flight. Planning this flight used to be quite difficult. Well, actually, not difficult, but it just used to be tedious. Um, But yeah, I just wait till the weather is up to date and everything. And uh, yes, I do have a Navigraph subscription for both uh, data and charts, so you'll see me use the charts as well. So I go to flight and I plan in my flight. So I have to look what the code is. So Aer Lingus EI. EI. Uh, usually my flight number is usually the time I start planning, so it says 1.46 p.m. Or now 1:47, so in um in non p.m. and a.m. it would be 13:47. So that it's my flight number, so 13:47 is the time, and that's my usually my then my call sign. So if it be in the morning, like 9 like 9:05, I do just 9:05. I wouldn't do 0 9:05. That's stupid. All right, next, the arrival and destination. And this is where things get a little interesting. I do check my chart sometimes, making sure that, let's say, some airports have runways left, center, and right. I usually, which is anyways usually the case, is I go for the runway that has the longest 
or the runway that is the longest. So if it's a 2-8 left and 2-8 right, if the 2-8 left ha is a longer runway, then I use 2-8 left. Um, and that is not if I'm flying online. I mean, I plan this in, a he in advance, but if I go on Vatsum, for example, and they say, all right, today the departure is 2-8 right, then no problem, I'll just switch over to 2-8 right, look at the charts, blah, 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 and correct it. But that's usually how I go for it, but if, but in this case, uh, there's only one version of this runway in that heading, and the winds are suggesting 2-8 for departure, which is a standard runway to use in uh, Dublin anyways, and 1-5 for arrival, which is a fairly long runway, and that's perfectly fine as well. Um, I know there's one air, one runway that does not have ILS, of, and so I'm checking right now my charts, as you can see, launching here. I'm going to go and check Hamburg, which I want to star, and uh, go to approach, and then all the approach ch uh, charts we've seen. Let's give it a second here. Okay, so approach, ILS, so it does have an ILS, so 1.5 does have an ILS. I'm going to go and keep this minimized, so 1.5 is perfectly fine. Then I just choose the aircraft, so as you can see, here's all the aircraft I have. I have uh, the total is A319, as you guys know, I have the Jarge 9330 now, I have the 727s, I have the 732, I have the ICG, I have Zeebo, these are the two Zeebo, uh, then the flight factors. Um, the the uh, Air Force Labs Cessna CRJ200 ERJs from the SSG and the 88 and the Saab as well. I even have the Saab, which I have no idea how to fly. So before I make a video on that, I definitely want to do more research. I own it. I bought it once. I own it for probably six months now. I haven't flown one single flight with it yet. Um, but you know, that's just how it be. And then Flight Factory 220. All these, all this data that I insert into these are specific for the aircraft. So um, I actually go into X plane, uh, go in the aircraft and check, make sure that uh, its actual uh, passenger capacity, its actual cargo capacity, and then I insert that as in PFPX and as well as Topcat, which is the takeoff calculator, takeoff perform performance calculator. And uh, step climb, no step climb, short flight. So. That's all set. I do random. I like to have a high one, so I probably set like click random like a ton of times until I get about the amount of passengers I want. Okay, that's done. Then fuel at whole time though it's at least around 30 minutes. And that's all I need for that. Route is generated, and then I, all I do is make sure that it's actually feasible and not super crazy because sometimes PFX likes to do some crazy stuff. Um, with your route, but this looks fine. And then click alternates, and that's pretty much it. And it will pretty much calculate just the least amount of travel distance that required as your alternate fuel. So you don't have to worry about the first one being the least, which I always thought it was, so I tried making this one go to that, blah blah blah. But that is not required, so I know our alternate will most likely be Echo Tango Hotel Sierra. I compute all that and oh, we got an error. It exceeds maximum landing weight. I just want to check. Was I right? Yep, I was right. So by 460, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reduce the cargo. Um, actually, I'm just going to do a cargo of 9002 and that's more within limits. Do takeoff calculator. So here um, I make sure and check the weather. So winds are apparently zero at zero. Here it says variable at three. So that's a problem. Variable at three. What if the what if the winds are actually coming from the opposite direction of two eight zero? That will be a problem, right? So what I can do is I can check here and see what it's becoming. Um, but it, it, it looks like it's going to come from the direction of 21280 because it's becoming 2102402102 so it's staying around that position so I'm just going to insert a 3 uh, let me just check no significant change 
which is one seven zero at eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two one zero at three because here it says three. So I'm just gonna assume it's two one th three or two one zero. Temperature is seven, so anti ice might be required if there's clouds and visible moisture. And there are a few clouds at two thousand, which is definitely a requirement for anti ice. Air conditioning is always off during ta takeoff for the A three twenty. So that's all I put in there. Um, no, no, nothing showing that it's raining or anyth anything. So I'm keep it dry. And it's asking us for two config two f thrust flex of fifty one degrees. And our um, with fifty one degrees, these are our V speeds. And how much, how many meters we'll have left over? Um, Topcat is not one hundred percent accurate. So uh, this is just I just use Topcat as a base, and then I actually have a specific A320 or Airbus calculator down here that I use to get the actual values. Zero degrees, let's check our uh, scatter to 26, so we'll do engine anti-eyes as well. Config full for sure, and we'll check. Um, so yeah, the speeds are already high. If the speeds are very low, I mean we are going to be a heavy, heavy aircraft once we, uh, once we start landing, so I do expect our speeds to be high. So I expected flaps full, but if our speed was like at 132 or something, I would probably set to config three. If it was a very low speed, I was like, yeah, no, uh, even a Cessna could overrun that, for example, which is not the case. But if just any small aircraft could overcome that speed, I would be like, yes, yeah, so let's just crank it to flaps three and uh, just land a little faster, which is fine. Check our uh, auto brake, and at this point, I would actually check to see if this is correct so with low if we touch on immediately at the touchdown zone with low outer brake uh, we should be able to reach the middle of the runway so I check my charts so I just gotta look up I mean it's, it's this one obviously I'm gonna go and save it because we're gonna use it later so runway 15 is 05 so 15 is here so that's about here and because we're run, uh, landing in runway 15, I know we have a lot of runway. We have 12,000 feet of runway here to use. It's a long runway, so we can really um, use low outer brake to reduce the temperature of the brakes, as well as um, uh, not as much reverse thrust. So we can taxi out and use all the space just to get right to our gate as fast as possible, which is perfect. Um, so we use slow outer brake, so we keep that in our head because we can't write that down anywhere. I apply. Now we got everything down here. I release it. I do now that I have Active Sky XP. Uh, there's a nice feature, so I export my file or my root. First, I do that. I send everything to Topcat. So, so I know the exact way. It's because if you'll you'll see in a sec, I'm gonna save the root to my desktop and then I'm done with PFPX. I'm completely done. I'm never going to use it again unless the only time I would use it is for the 727 or for the 732 because of SIVA. That's the only time I would use it just to get coordinates and things like that. But otherwise I can just close it out. I can also close out of this website. And if you look here and look here, you can see the differences. It says cargo 9002 because it only counts, it only counts the cargo. But we also have baggage, which it doesn't count in for. So that's why I look at PFPX. It gives you actual baggage as well. So it calculates that in as well as 1,705. Now you can also just do the baggage plus the cargo, which is no big deal. But um, this just gives me a more accurate value to put in the actual aircraft loader. Um, so these two tabs are usually on my right monitor, so you wouldn't see those anymore. And then I would also launch. Uh, this tool, which is for the AT20, so I'm going to go ahead and enter some values right now. Um, I then go to takeoff, runway 28, I'd update the weather because I guess this gives us good information. See, it says 100 here. I'm going to do 210 at 3. So 28. Runway length is 2,600 meters, so around there. Air elevation is below 1,000. Wind component is head. One, so set that. Outside air temperature is seven degrees. Perfect, and Q and H will be expected to be nine nine nine. Right there. Flaps two, anti-ice engine only, and dry.
for now and then take off weight I'll enter later and uh, I'm going to keep that on the side right here and now with the charts I check my flight plan so and let me check airport briefing so usually I read this stuff in advance so let me read this right now for looking for noise abatement procedures as you can see other than less for a low noise continuous descent approach this is for this is for all right departure noise abatement all right noise abatement departure procedure one is recommended for all jet aircraft departing from hamburg so use high lift takeoff climb with max climb gradient to 3000 so noise abatement departure procedure, procedure one is required uh, for Hamburg which means climbing to 3000 feet before cleaning up the aircraft so we know that that's perfect and that's good to go so we know that now airport has been saved and we'll keep it in there taxi restrictions um, here parking stand coordinates I want to keep as well and then our SID I check my route again our set is the Kish One Bravo. So that is. Where is it? Am I blind? Am I blind? Kish. Where's the Kish One Bravo? Oops. Did I mean to launch that? Um. Oh, that's because I'm in Hamburg. What am I doing? <laughs> See. All right. All right. We're good. We're fine. That was my mistake. I was about to say, like, where's the cash? So taxi, again, briefing. So disregard all that information. Now we gotta look at uh, noise abatement departure procedure again. Start de-icing, briefing, noise abatement procedures. All right, noise abatement departure procedure two. So actually, we just climbed to th 1,500, which is fine, which is perfectly okay. Okay, so so we're disregarding that. I'll save it just in case, as well as um. The airport chart. Parking stands. Um, no, don't need that coordinates. I do want. Um, let's see, is there any taxi information? To let us know what way we may taxi. Mm -mm -mm. So there's not a lot, lot of information there. So now we're going to go to departure. Look for the actual arrival, which is since the Kish, but it's the transition is Liffy. Here's Kish at one Bravo. Let's go and look at that. Brings us out to Liffy, and uh, seen the one Bravo. So here you can check that. Perfect. Any references that we need to check? Nope. So this is all the information we need for departure. I'm going to go ahead and go to arrival and do the same thing. Taxi. So in this case, I do want the uh, parking stands. I do not need the coordinates. I'm going to go to star. Our star today is the Ripsa 4 Alpha. Ripsa 1 5 RNF should be it. What? Well, that's the Ripsaw transition. Um, but we're not going to use the Ripsaw for alpha transition, I don't think. Approach ILS 1-5. So, as we... Lima Bravo Victor. Okay. And then if I check... This Lima Bravo Victor is right there. 
So we'd be flying over. Wait, wait, wait. Where's those right here? So we'd be flying here, went in there, turning for our runway. That's perfectly fine. And that's all we need for this. So I'm going to go back to our departure. And I'm going to go to my very first chart I will need today, which is my coordinates right here. I'm going to put that in monitor 2. I put this in monitor 2 as well. This as well. Everything is down monitor 2. And this is when I start X plane. Although, I actually start Active Sky XP at this point. This is, this is a new software, so uh, doing things here is totally different. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what I do here. I go to flight plan. This is why I save the flight plan, so I can uh, load it. I go in your Delta Whiskey to Eham. Flight level was 350 if I checked correctly. Our alternate is Echo Tango Hotel Sierra. Tango Hotel Sierra, I believe. And then so I just refresh it, and then it gives us information here. And uh, yeah, this um, the reason why I do this is because... Um, a great thing about Active Sky XP, it has a nice feature of ATIS where you can just enter the same frequencies all the time and it will give you either the departure or the arrival ATIS. So 122.0 is departure, 122.025 is arrivals. But they, of, of course, they don't know where you can arrive unless you put in the destination in your flight plan. So that's what I do. And so I know. Um, and this also helps with transitions, apparently, that's what they said. So I go back to home, and I minimize this completely. And uh, this is when I start x -plane. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you in the next, uh, we'll see you in a moment with the actual flight.